streets of America, busy retail stores serve the people of their communities. These shoppers spend billions of hard-earned dollars, and they want the best values those dollars can buy. These customers are, at other times and on other days, people with many different jobs, different needs. The retailers of America serve these people well, providing a wide variety of merchandise of good quality at reasonable prices. This service is made possible largely by the quality control methods used in modern merchandising. Making a purchase is a comparatively simple action. However, it takes a great many creative, mechanical, and scientific processes to make a piece of merchandise fit a precise human need. Behind a package like this one lies the dramatic story of how retailers study and meet the needs of their customers. Shirts, for example. Men want shirts that fit well, smooth-fitting collars that hold their shape. Their wives like shirts that launder easily, shirts with long-wearing collars and cuffs. And what customers want, the retailers provide. Months before the shirts reach the store, Experienced shirt buyers carefully selected the fabrics which make the kind of shirts the customer wants. Samples are laboratory tested, and only those that meet the required standards are accepted by the buyer. Now that the approved fabrics have been selected, let's visit the cotton mill with one of the buyers to see how the high quality specified is maintained during production. At the mill, the raw cotton goes through many processes. This is the combing operation, which combs the long fibers parallel and removes the short fibers and waste. In the drawing operation, the combed fibers are drawn out to greater length. These processes help improve the appearance of the finished fabric. Spinning draws and twists the fibers into yarns of the desired size and strength. The yarns are woven into fabrics on power looms. At speeds too fast for the human eye, the shuttle races back and forth, carrying with it the filling yarns, which are woven with the warp yarns to form the fine broadcloth from which the shirts will be made. But before the fabric is ready to be tailored, it goes through many finishing operations. In mercerizing, which produces a smooth, silky finish, the cloth is treated with caustic soda while it is held under tension. Finally, the fabric is sanferized, processed so it will not shrink more than 1% in laundering. Having assured himself that the broadcloth meets required standards, the buyer orders it delivered to a manufacturer. He reviews the features he wants. For instance, the cuffs and collars must be made of long wearing material and shoulders cut with plenty of fullness. Now the buyer follows through by visiting the shirt factory. Specifications and patterns are given to shirt factories all over the country to maintain uniformity of product. With painstaking accuracy, skilled craftsmen cut the parts for many shirts at a time from fabrics piled a hundred or more layers deep. Permanent collar fit is built in on these machines, which remove every last bit of shrinking. These collars, as well as the cuffs, are constructed from extra sturdy material to ensure long life. And now to the laboratory, where merchandise is tested, a major step in quality control. This is a test to determine how much the fabric will shrink. Samples are carefully measured and marked, then given a thorough washing in the type of machines used by commercial laundry. Samples are pressed dry and flat so they can be accurately measured again and the exact degree of shrinkage determined. If the fabric is sanferized, it must not shrink more than 1%. The collar and cuff materials are tested for toughness and durability.
A thread count of both warp and fill is made to be sure the broadcloth contains the required 220 threads to the inch square. Even the buttons are tested to make certain they will not break in the power presses used by commercial laundry. Those samples that fail the test are rejected long before the merchandise reaches the retail store. All of this testing has but one purpose, to provide the customer with sound merchandise of good value. How long a shirt will wear is a topic of frequent discussion among the nation's housewives, and that goes for sheets, too. Housewives want sheets that are smooth and closely woven, good-looking sheets, but they must be sturdy enough to stand up under frequent washings at home or in commercial laundry. A label like this on a muslin sheet is insurance of long and satisfactory service, service proved by laboratory tests and controls. For instance, the weight of sheets must be kept uniform continuously. A good sheet should last for several years of normal use. In this laboratory test, which duplicates home laundering conditions, the sheets are washed again and again. This chemical test shows how much of the weight of the sheet is sizing, a starchy material usually required for proper finishing during manufacture. It must be kept to a minimum so that customers receive full value in sturdy cotton, not starch. The sizing is removed in a chemical bath. Then the samples are rinsed, dried, and weighed again to see how much of the original weight consisted of sizing. Among other tests is this one for tensile strength, an accurate measure of the amount of force it takes to pull the sheeting fabric apart. These tests and others like them, conducted year after year, make it possible for the retailer to provide customers with merchandise of uniform quality. Blankets, for instance. There's a big story in the quality controls required to provide real value in an all-wool blanket. Control starts with the raw material, wool. Various types are selected and blended, soft and springy for a nap that will stand up, sturdy fibers for long wear. Several variations of a blanket may be presented for the buyer's consideration. Laboratory tests of samples guide the buyer in determining the final specifications he gives to the mill. But quality control doesn't end there. It continues all the way through actual production. 